Hello, my name is Robert Dean Steele, and today we're going to have, of course, our Sunday morning prayer time. So, Father, we thank you today for this wonderful opportunity, Lord, to spend time praying and believing God for incredible things on this July 17th morning. So, Father, we thank you for what's going to happen today. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, of course, every Sunday morning, there's so much to pray about. But the first thing we're going to do right now is prepare ourselves for the breakthrough that God has for us today. Lord, once again, we are so grateful for every opportunity to spend time with you. And today, Lord, there's a couple of things that we want to cover in prayer. And that is, of course, the heavy hand of God's conviction upon people and, Lord, for you to touch them. Lord, we're so thankful that uh, you are the one that brings victory and breakthrough. And, Lord, I want to think today about a, a wonderful man of God whose name was George Mueller. They called him the Prince of Prayer. And, Father, the reason why they called him the Prince of Prayer is because of the fact that, Lord, he would ask you for things and you would supply it marvelously. Lord, one of the things that he prayed about all the time was that you would give him souls. And Lord, so today, that is what we're praying for today. Lord, when we look at our world and what is going on in our world, we know that we are living in the last days. And living in the last days, the one thing that we want to see, Lord, is a move of God. And so, Father, today, in the name of Jesus, we remember the story of George Mueller, who was praying for his community of Bristol. And Lord, time and time again, he would come before your throne and he would say, Lord, I'm so grateful for all the children that we are ministering to and all the young people that Lord are being touched. But Father, my community of Bristol is going to a lost eternity. And day after day, night after night, George Mueller would be praying for the people of Bristol. And Lord, whether we live in Bristol or in Edmonton or St. Albert, where I pastor, Father, for example, in the city of St. Albert, where I pastor, there are 70,000 souls. And Lord, it is an indication that probably about 65,000 of them, Lord, do not know you. And so this morning, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I am going to stand in the gap for the people of St. Albert. And I'm also going to stand in the gap for the people of Edmonton and as well the province of Alberta. Our district leader, whose name was Gary Tatinger, who told us that there were 4.1 million people that are living currently, uh, or I should say, without the Lord in the province of Alberta and the Northwest Territories. Lord, that's a lot of people. And those people need to know who you are and what they are. And Father, we're going to break it down into three groups today as we pray for them. Number one, we're going to pray for our unsaved loved ones. Lord, every one of us have unsaved loved ones. People that we care about, people that we want to see come to know you. And Father, we're going to make a declaration today, and we're going to state the biblical norm. Father, we know that it says in Acts 16, 31, that not only shall we be saved, but our household as well. Father, today, in the name of Jesus, we lift before you our unsaved loved ones. The biblical norm, Lord, is that entire families should be saved. We have uh, four illustrations, Lord, from the scripture that we can use today. The first one, of course, was Cornelius. When Peter came to Cornelius' house, he preached the gospel and the entire household got saved. Father, that was very exciting. Also as well, Lord, Pentecost happened on that day. So, Father, today we want to see a Pentecost like that. Father, we want to see a move of God like you, like Cornelius saw on that day. The second example was Lydia. The Bible says that when Paul met her down by the river, 
the Lord opened up her heart that she would be able to understand and comprehend. Father, what we're asking to do today is we know that there are people like Cornelius who are ready to receive. People that, Lord, are already doing things to prepare their hearts for that wonderful move of God. But then there are others that, Lord, are like Lydia, who we're going to meet, Lord, and somehow the conversation is going to turn to eternal things. And Lord, you're going to open up their hearts to receive the gospel. That's what we're praying for, Lord. We're praying that we will have family members today that will some way be able to hear the gospel. Father, we all give invitations to people to churches. Lord, I know that every single week I give many invitations to church. And I know that, Lord, some of them are followed up and some, Lord, are not. But, Father, no matter what the invitation is, it is an indication about how we care for those that, Lord, we come into contact. And, Father, we know that there are Lydia's out there. And we know that there are Cornelius's out there that are just waiting to give their lives to Jesus Christ. And then, Lord, when they get saved, their entire family can and will be saved. That's what we're saying. That's the biblical norm. The third, of course, uh, example was the Philippian jailer. The Bible says that Paul and Silas had been put into prison. And then what happened, Lord, was this. They were singing songs and praising the Lord. Oh, that, Lord, we would have that same aspect. I mean, Cornelius, for example... He was doing things that were getting him prepared. Lydia, of course, had her heart open. But Paul and Silas, this is a marvelous aspect, Lord, to look at when we think this. And Father, each person was in a different state. They were ready to receive, but each one had a different example. Well, the Bible says that as Paul and Silas were singing and praising God around midnight, there was a supernatural event, an earthquake, which was actually quite common for that area, began to shake that entire jail. And the doors opened and the chains actually fell off. Now, the Philippian jailer, when he had um, seen what had happened, he was going to kill himself because he assumed that all the prisoners had escaped. Paul, through a, a supernatural means, was able to call out to the jailer and says, We are still all here. Don't harm yourself. Isn't that exciting, Lord, that we can see things in the spiritual realm? Father, I pray that you would give us that type of ability, that when we're praying for people, we will actually see the indication or the condition of their heart. The jailer, of course, um, called for a light and he came to Paul. And I love that thing. He says, men, gentlemen, what can I do to get saved? Well, Paul was, Paul told him to repent and believe on Jesus Christ. And the marvelous thing is that, Lord, when Paul and Silas came to his house, he washed their wounds, and then his entire family got saved. That is the premise of what we want to see happen today. Lord, we want to see our families come to know you. It may be that, Lord, they are doing good things right now to prepare them. It might be that, Lord, they are uh, having their hearts open like Lydia, or they might need an earth-shattering experience like an earthquake to basically shake everything. We know that there's a scripture that says uh, everything that can be shaken will be shaken. Father, maybe today we need our family members to have a shaking experience. Maybe everything in their lives right now is being shaken. We know that, Lord, we are living in a time of rising prices. We have a time of rising interest rates. We have a time where, Lord, there seems to be more month than money. Lord, whatever that indication is, we are asking for a supernatural shaking. 
The last one, Lord, well, of course, that we want to get, use an example was Crispus. Crispus was already a godly individual. But Father, he was following the wrong direction. He was uh, a Jew, but Lord, he was the ruler of the synagogue. And when Paul was in Corinth, he was preaching the gospel. And Lord, this is such an interesting story because uh, the people of the synagogue were not uh, accepting Paul. And so Paul made a decision that he was going to go exclusively to the Gentiles. He said, in that moment, I am going to go exclusively to the Gentiles. And Crispus, who was the ruler of the synagogue, believed what Paul said and believed the gospel of Jesus Christ. Lord, there are people who are following traditional religion. People that, Lord, are have all the forms of godliness, but the problem is that they deny the power thereof because they have not accepted Jesus Christ. Well, the Bible says that Crispus believed and his entire household. There are four examples, Lord, right there of people that, Lord, gave their lives to Jesus Christ. And we've talked about the condition of each one. Each one in the book of Acts, Lord, were spoken to supernaturally. And you were able to to see those uh, individuals, Lord, each one, Lord, come to know you. And then from there, Lord, their entire family came to know the Lord. That is the promise that we have today, Lord, for our unsaved lovers. Remember, Lord, we are praying today for the unsaved. Father, we want them to come to our churches. We want them to come to the church where I pastor in Cornerstone. Father, we want them to know you today. That's why we're fighting for their souls. We know that the Holy Spirit speaks three ways. Number one, Lord, he speaks to them about sin. Father, these individuals that we love and care about are unsaved loved ones. Acts 16.31 says that, Lord, they shall be saved. We're making that declaration. Secondly, Lord, the Holy Spirit is the only one that can convince them of their sin. Father, they have our example. They have our prayers. We are fighting for them today in prayer. But Father, only the Holy Spirit can convict them that they are sinners. Until a person actually believes that they are a sinner and that they need salvation, they're not going to get saved. Father, there's a spiritual blindness, and we break that spiritual blindness today. There's a spiritual deafness. We break that spiritual deafness today. There's a spiritual uh, dementia. They are not able to receive the information. Today, we're breaking that spiritual dementia. Lord, there is a hardness of heart. Father, their heart is not towards you. But we pray that, Lord, today... The promise of Ezekiel will come to them, that their heart of stone will become a heart of flesh. Because we know wherever our heart is, that is where our treasure is. And wherever our treasure is, that is where our heart is. Father, we're praying today that, Lord, the deafness, the blindness, the spiritual dementia, and the hardness of heart will be broken. And the Holy Spirit can penetrate that heart. The Holy Spirit can put an arrow of the word of God into their hearts. And Lord, they will receive that. Father, that is why we have saturated our prayer time with the word of God. Jesus said, ask anything in my name. He says, and it shall be done. Well, Jesus Christ was and is the word of God. And through him, this wonderful avenue of prayer can be fully completed. And we can believe, Lord, with every fiber of our being, that, Lord, you are going to hear, you're going to answer, and you're going to bring salvation to those that we care about and those that we love. Father, as well, we pray today that in the name of Jesus, that, Lord, our wonderful promise of Acts 16.31 is going to come to pass. And, Lord, we're believing for our children, our young people, our young adults. We're believing for our young, for our, uh, young families, families with Teenagers, empty nesters, and seniors. Lord, we're believing that all age brackets are going to come to know you. We're going to believe that, Lord, today our spouses 
are going to come to know you, Lord. That our children and our grandchildren, if we have grandchildren, that uh, our brothers and our sisters, our mothers and fathers, Lord, whatever the relationship that we have for them, we're believing today that conviction of sin is going to come. The second one, Lord, is judgment. Lord, anyone who does not know you, Lord, is going to be judged for their sin. And we don't want that to happen. We want them, Lord, to come to know you. We want them, Lord, not to face the consequences of what they've done. We want them, Lord, to be gloriously and wonderfully saved. That's what we want to see happen, Lord. And so today, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we are standing in the gap, Lord, and we're praying that the conviction of judgment, Lord, we know that the scripture says this, that and Peter, Peter says this, he says that God doesn't want anyone to perish, but everyone to come to the knowledge of the truth. That is our prayer. That is our aim. That is our goal of this prayer time. Father, we want to break those things once and for all. Lord, thirdly, we're praying today that, Lord, people would understand that they can be righteous. Oh, God, we want our family members to know you so that they can live a righteous and godly life, that they can receive like we have, Lord, all the benefits of heaven, and that, Lord, their, uh, their family members, the people that they belong to. Father, we're talking about... Um, a growing movement, Lord, of unsaved loved ones. They get saved, and they that they are praying for, and they that want to see. Because, Lord, the most natural outgrowth of all of this is that you, we want everybody to be saved. We want everybody to know the Lord. We want them, Lord, to have that victory and that breakthrough today. We want them to have that glorious and wonderful salvation, Lord. That's what we're praying for today. That's what we're believing for today. That's what we're fighting for today. That our loved ones would come to know you. That our loved ones would have that wonderful relationship. Now, Lord, we're making a second declaration. And that is for uh, Proverbs 22, 6. Train a child in the way they should go. And when they're old, they will not depart from it. Father, today, in the name of Jesus, we are standing in the gap for our children. Lord, some of them are wayward right now. Some of them are like the prodigal. They've come to us and they've said, we want to do what we want to do. And Lord, they've gone out into the world. And right now, they are like that young man. They are living it up. They think that they are free, but they are not free. There will come a time where, Lord, that, that uh, lifestyle will catch up to them. And in that moment, Lord, we're going to be like the Father. We're going to pray for them. We're going to lovingly wait for them. And Father, many of us have been waiting for a while. But Lord, that's not the end of their story, and it's not the end of our story. This wonderful promise of Proverbs 22, 6, Lord, we have done everything we can. We taught them. We prayed for them. We gave them the very best that we could. We spent time with them. We walked with them. But Father, they made a decision. And that decision was that they were going to test the waters. Father, there's a, a, a little thing that, uh, for example, Amish children do. And that is that they get this opportunity to head out into the world. And then they head out. And then nine times out of ten, they come back. Well, Father, we know we're not Amish. But Lord, we know that our children are out there. And they're, they're living their lives apart from God. And Father, it breaks our heart to see what's going on. But we know, and we're standing upon that promise, that they're going to come to themselves. They're going to look down, and all of a sudden they're going to realize that the world has taken everything away from them. They've lost so much. And all of a sudden, in that moment, they'll realize, I've got to come back. And Father, 
they'll come back home. They'll come back to us and they'll come back to our faith. So, Father, that's what we're going to do. We're praying for them. We're looking for them to return. We know that, Lord, they have been devastated. We know that they have been scarred. We know that they've been hurt by the world. Father, they may be carrying anxiety. They may be carrying fear. They may be carrying uh, guilt. Whatever it is, Lord, in that moment when they return, when they say, Mom, Dad, I'm coming home. Mom, Dad, I'm coming back. Father, in that moment, we're going to throw our arms around them. We're going to love them. And we're going to restore them like the Father did. We're going to celebrate and applaud of the fact that they're back with us. And Lord, in that moment, they're going to give their lives back to you. And Father, that's what we're believing for. We're believing that, Lord, wherever our children are, wherever our grandchildren are, Wherever those members of our family that, Lord, knew you, they're going to come back. And Father, that is also as well. In just a moment, we're going to be praying. In fact, Lord, I'm going to do it right now. And that is, we're going to pray for those that, Lord, at one time knew you. Lord, we're lifting them before you right now in Jesus' name. Lord, our hearts break over the fact that they knew the goodness of God. They knew that, Lord, that you, they had a personal relationship with you. Father, it may have been for a short period of time, or it may have been a long period of time. Either way, Lord, they knew about eternal and abundant life. They had a relationship with you. They cared about the things that you cared about. Their lives were centered on following you. But for a multitude of reasons, Lord, they walked away. And Father, we're not going to condemn them for walking away. Our hearts are broken because, Lord, they did walk away. But this is the moment, Lord, where they are going to come back. This is the moment that, Lord, they're going to give their lives to you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we're praying for a longing in their hearts. You know, I love the scripture that tells us, Lord, that uh, you are married to the backslider. That means that, Lord, you're not going to let them go for a single moment. And Lord, that's what we're praying for today. We're praying today that, Lord, they're going to have a longing for you. But Lord, we pray conviction upon them right now, not condemnation conviction. Father, again, coming back to the Holy Spirit, please speak to them about their sin. Speak to them about their judgment and talk to them, Lord, about the fact that they can be righteous again, that they can rediscover that wonderful love, that Father, as soon as they make that decision, that your wonderful love would pour over them, that this would be the moment that, Lord, whatever reason why that they're using, Lord, to justify, to excuse, to de de deflect. Father, you are the hound of heaven, and you are speaking to them right now in the name of Jesus. You've been speaking to them, Lord. You brought people across their path. Father, I've talked to many backsliders over the year, and they say, yes, I know. Lord, I think of my own brother, Doug, who was at one time planning to become a preacher. And Father, for one reason or another, when he became a mid-teenager, he turned his back on you. And I remember, and I've had many conversations with him over the years, and he says, yeah, I know I should come back. Well, Father, we're praying for the Dougs of the world. We're praying that, Lord, they will come back. Lord, we're praying for others that, Lord, you know, at one time, I, I used to speak to a, a fellow whose name was John in the community of Slave Lake. Him and his wife used to go to a church. But Lord, for one reason or another, they didn't go. And I remember speaking to him and, and he said, yeah, I know I should come back. But Lord, there were many years years of living in the world. 
And Lord, even though your voice was still speaking to him through me or others, Father, there was a hardness of heart. Lord, one of the most difficult things to do is it tells us in Hebrews that, Lord, once someone knows the Lord, for them, it's very difficult to come back. Lord, that's because they they have, um, how do I describe it? They have a, a blockage, a hindrance. Lord, it's satanic, it is worldly, and it's human. And Father, we're going to remove that blockage right now. Father, I don't know what to call it except that. A blockage, a hindrance, a wall, a fence that is standing between them. Lord, we're praying that it would be broken right now in Jesus' name. A blindness, Lord, a deafness, a, um, a hardness of heart, a spiritual dementia that, Lord, has been taken and put up by themselves. Father, they knew you, but they don't know you now. They, when it, when they are, when they are confronted, Lord, they, they, they say, yeah, I know I should come back, but Lord, there's a blockage there and we're going to break that once and for all. We're going to believe that our, uh, that those who knew you, Lord, the backslider, Father, maybe they grew up in a church. And maybe they feel that they, because of that uh, first um, prayer of giving their lives to Jesus Christ, that they are still saved. Lord, there are people like that. I've had family members that, Lord, they say, oh, they're, they're living like the devil. But, you know, they still believe that they're saved. Father, that's a blindness too. That's a spiritual stronghold. Father, today, in the name of Jesus, whatever the stronghold is, I break right now in Jesus' name. And I pray with every fiber of my being that, Lord, you will speak to them today, that you will talk to them directly today, and that, Lord, they will come back. They have had a, a wonderful, at one time, they had a wonderful relationship with you. But now, Lord, it's not there. And Father, we're praying for them today. We're praying that, Lord, you would speak directly to their heart, that you would talk to them, Lord, in the midnight hour, that, Lord, when we come across them, instead of saying, yeah, I know I should come back, Lord, that they will say, yeah, I want to do that. Father, that's what we're praying for. And there are many in our communities like that. There are many in the city of Edmonton like that. There are many, Lord, in the city of St. Albert like that. Lord, there are many in the province of Alberta like that. And across our dominion, there are so many. Lord, I remember when I got saved back in 1974. There were many, many, Lord, who gave their lives to Jesus Christ. I was remembering a young girl whose name was Paula. And Father, she came to our church. Another one whose name was Joy. Another one whose name was Mickey. And the list goes on. I pray for the Mickeys. I pray, Lord, today for the Paulas. I pray today for the Joys. Lord, I pray today for those young people like Lee and others that, Lord, gave their lives to Jesus Christ. They knew you at one time. But Lord, for one reason or another, they stopped coming. And Lord, they have lost that wonderful salvation. And some have, Lord, lived their entire lives away from you. But this is the moment. And Lord, one of the things I want to make very clear, age has nothing to do with it. Lord, whether they gave their lives to you when they were young or just recently, and have walked away from that. Lord, there are others, like a young lady whose name was Georgia, who found it so difficult. I remember, Lord, she was living in the community of, of uh, Lacombe with me. She gave her life to Jesus Christ. And then she said to me, it's too hard. I can't, 
I, I've lost all my friends. And I remember saying, don't give up this great and wonderful salvation. Lord, I don't know if she's alive or what's going on, but Father, I pray for the Georges. Lord, what I'm saying today is this. Lord, these were people who knew you. They had a relationship with you. And they gave it up. But this is the moment that they're going to come back. This is the moment where the deafness, the blindness, the spiritual dementia, the hardness of heart is going to be removed. And they are going to give their lives to you. That's what we're praying for. That's what we're standing in the gap for today. We're not letting them go. This is the Sunday where they're going to wake up and they're going to say, I'm going to Cornerstone where Pastor Dean, Robert Dean Steele pastors. I am going to come back to the Lord. Father, we're praying for our unsaved loved ones. We're praying for our backsliders. Lord, we're standing in the gap for them today. We don't want them, Lord, to go to a lost eternity. Lord, there'll be no justifications. There'll be no excuses. There'll be no uh, deflections. Lord, today, they are going to feel the convicting hand of God. That lovingly powerful hound of heaven is going to speak to them today. He's going to talk to them about their situation. He's going to tell them that there is a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. And they're going to have that aha moment where all of a sudden, like the prodigal, they're going to say, what am I doing here? This is not the life that I really want. And then in that moment, they're going to say, I'm coming home. And we're not just talking to us. They're going to come home to you. In that moment, they're going to say, I've got to give my life back to the Lord. That's what we're praying for today. That's what we're standing in the gap for today. And Lord, the third thing we're going to do, we're going to be like Job of old. Lord, every morning, Job, he got up and he would offer sacrifices for his children. He acted as an intermediator. He was a prayer warrior standing in the gap for his children. And every morning he would offer a sacrifice. And then he would say, Lord, if my children have done something to offend you or hurt you, would you forgive them on my behalf? Lord, what he was doing was what Paul talked about in Corinthians, where Paul said that our unsaved loved one, our children, members of our family that we care about and that we love, he said in that moment, you would listen to what they had to say. Job prayed every single day for his family. And that's what we're doing. We're doing a Job experience, Lord, right now. We're making a declaration of faith. We are doing a Joshua 24, 15. What a great story. What a great account for Job and for Joshua. You see, Joshua had brought all the people together in one place. They had been able to conquer the land. They were victorious. And Joshua then gives them two things or three things to think about. Number one, he said, do you remember when we came out of Egypt? Some of them were, you know, had, were a little older like him. And he says, you remember the story. He says, remember, there were all these gods in Egypt. And the Lord defeated each one. Each one of those plagues dealt with a particular deity in that uh, the polytheism of Egypt. He says, do you remember God delivered us from them? And do you remember when God actually drowned the entire army of Pharaoh in the Red Sea? And now here we are. We are a nation. We have a land. We have a homeland. He says, now, remember that. He says, we defeated them. Now, he says, you have a new challenge. And that new challenge is, 
the gods of the Canaanites. He says, Baal and Ashtaroth, they are going to be calling for your attention. He says, right now, you are in a place of spiritual victory. You have, you have forsaken the gods of the Egyptians, but you have a new challenge. And that new challenge is, of course, to deal with the gods of the land. Father, right now, there are people of God who are being tempted by the gods of the land. Lord, we are living in a time right now where that which is wrong has become right and that which is right has become wrong. Father, we know that we are being constantly um, uh, uh, attacked by this. The so-called social um, cultural revisionists, political correctness, educational attacks. Lord, also as well, special interest groups that are trying to assert their, um, their uh, agenda. And of course, that's economic and political. Lord, we're dealing with that right now. They are telling us to, re to rewrite our Bible. They are trying to get us, Lord, to conform to their image or standard. We're not going to do that. Lord, Joshua made a statement. And he said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Father, we're believing for that today. We're believing that, Lord, this is the moment that our declaration of faith is going to become real. It's going to become part of who we are and what we are doing. The last group that we want to pray for, Lord, is the majority. Lord, in the city of St. Albert, there's probably 65,000 people who do not know you. In the city of Edmonton, I'm going to say that's probably about 900,000. Lord, we know that in the province of Alberta and the territories, 4.1 million do not know you. Across the country of Canada, I think it would be safe to say that probably 30 million people do not know you. Father, around the world, there are literally billions who do not know you. Father, we're pleading for them today. Father, they are like the people of Nineveh. They don't know their right hand from their left. But Lord, we want to do today in the area of prayer a Jonah. Lord, we want to believe that they're going to get saved. We want to stand in the gap for them today. We don't want them to go to a lost eternity. Father, there are so many means and methods of how you can speak to them. It can happen through social media or some sort of media medium. Lord, it can be through a personal testimony of one of your people. It could be, Lord, like what I have done. Lord, in my city of St. Albert, I have passed out literally 50,000 invitations. Lord, what I'm praying for today for me is that, Lord, today would be the day that you would activate those wonderful invitations. That, Lord, when someone looked at it, it could have been years ago, or it could have been in recent days. Either way, Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, we are calling those things which are not as if they are. Lord, we're standing in the gap for them today. We're asking you, Lord, to speak to them. However means and methods is going to happen. Lord, we're going to believe for a revival. You know, it tells us, Lord, in the last days that you will pour out your spirit upon all flesh. And we know that there are mountains that are standing in the way between these people getting saved and not being saved. Today, we're going to say, Mountain, you right now, in the name of Jesus, are going to fall. We're applying the grace of God to that particular mountain right now, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we're saying grace, 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 grace. Zechariah 4, 6 says, It's not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Holy Spirit. As we talked about before, only you can convince the unsaved about their sin. You will show them, Lord, about judgment. I know that there are so many 
in that community that, Lord, don't even believe in God. I pray that today their eyes would open. Lord, there are many who do not believe in judgment. They don't believe in hell. There's a song that came up back in uh, 1969 from a group called uh, uh, Blood, Sweat, and Tears. And the, the, uh, the song said, he says, I pray that there, I know there is no heaven. He says, I pray there is no hell. Father, there are a lot of people who don't believe that. But today, in the name of Jesus, we're standing in the gap for them. We're pleading for their souls. We're asking that, Lord, this would be the moment that you'd speak to them. This would be the moment that, Lord, salvation would come to them. Lord, I can't believe how quickly our time has gone. But, Lord, today, whether they are unsaved loved ones, whether they are backsliders, or whether they are unsaved generally, we're standing in the gap for them. And we're asking you, Lord, to bring them to our churches. Lord, we're asking that they wake up today and they will know that they have to go to the house of the Lord. Father, we pray for them. We plead for them. We stand in the gap for them right now. We ask that, Lord, whatever means and methods that you use to speak to them, this is their day. This is the day of salvation. This is the day where, Lord, they're going to give their lives to you that they're going to find that beautiful, abundant, and eternal life that only you can bring. Holy Spirit, you know where they live. You know who they are. And you know that this is that moment. We pleaded for their souls this morning. We've stood in the gap. We've declared the biblical norm. Father, we know that many of our family members right now, entire families, Lord, we might be the only one but Father, today, in the name of Jesus, we're believing God. Lord, I remember a fella who used to phone me at AM 930, the light. And he would say to me, he says, my wife, my two children don't know you. And my heart is breaking. Father, I pray for that man and men like him. I pray that, Lord, their families would come to know you. And this would be the day that the entire family would come to the house of God. Lord, last Sunday, we had a Korean family. There was a mom and a dad and two adult children who came to our church. I pray today that they would come back. And I pray today that, Lord, other families would come to Cornerstone where I pastor. And Father, I'm believing today for every church. I'm believing today that entire families would come to know you. Lord, that's what we want to see happen today. And so, Father, I thank you for this today in the name of Jesus. I thank you that, Lord, nothing is going to stop what you want to do. That there's victory and there's breakthrough today for each and every single one. The power of God is going to come into that situation. That, Lord, your salvation, that norm of entire families, Cornelius's, Crispus, the Philippian jailer, Lydia, that will become the norm, not the exception. That's what we're praying for, Lord. That's what we're believing for, Lord. And that's what we're asking to happen in the name of Jesus. Lord, you can build your church. And we're praying with every fiber of our being that, Lord, that is what you're going to do. And Father, one final thing that we pray today, wherever we are, let the convicting power of the Holy Spirit fall upon this generation. John Wesley would often pray, Lord, I want to see conviction, not condemnation, conviction. Because conviction, Lord, is all about convincing. And Lord, we're praying that you'll convince them today and they'll come to know you. And I ask this all in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Well, my name is Robert Dean Steele. I hope that you enjoyed our prayer time today. If you like what you've seen, then I would encourage you to press the like button and also subscribe to my YouTube channel. It has been such a wonderful privilege to pray with you today, and I'm believing for good things for you, and I'm believing for good things for me. You have yourself a great 
and godly day. And of course, I'll see you tomorrow again with our prayer time. God bless you. Have yourself a great and godly day.